I'm Christopher G. Moore. I'm speaking from the Noel Coward Suite at the Oriental Hotel in Bangkok, Thailand. I'd like to speak about my novel, which is called Paying Back Jack. It is the 10th novel in the Vincent Calvino crime fiction series. To give you an idea about the novel, I'd like to start with the first two sentences in the book. Calvino's last jacket was ruined when Nicky the Toad, Morris, blood spattered over the lapel and down the pocket. A couple of things to bear in mind about Nicky the Toad. He didn't die as Calvino only punched him in the nose after the toad had reached a knife hidden in his boot. In this book, we find Vincent Calvino, who, an ex-New Yorker, who is running a one-man private investigation firm located on Sukhumvit Road in Bangkok. It's a kind of private investigation firm where men with broken hearts, whiskey on their breath, fire in their guts, revenge in their eyes show up asking for help. Vincent is someone who has a reputation for finding people. He has a reputation for doing a stakeout in a professional way. As a result, he is able to make a living in a place which is hard for a foreigner to make a living. Part of the way he is able to survive in paying back Jack and has survived the other nine novels in this series is Colonel Pratt. The Colonel is a member of the Royal Thai Police Force and a protector of Vincent Calvino. And indeed, in this book, Vincent needs protection. It starts out with Vincent, who has taken a case really as a favor. A favor on the part of a friend of Colonel Pratt, who is a retired general. A retired general is an elderly man who's distinguished, elegant, and a very good Buddhist. But he has a problem. He has a tenant who refuses to pay rent. Now, Calvino, who prides himself on having a certain kind of cultural understanding amongst the Thais, about the Thais, has figured out that there's a Chinese taboo about coffins. You don't really want coffins around where you're working because it's disturbing. It creates a spiritual and mystical disruption. People avoid you. So Calvino thinks it's a good idea. We'll get a coffin, put it in front of this guy's office and see what happens. Well, what happens is the guy begs for the coffin to be taken away and Calvino says, can do, pay the rent. So ultimately, after the begging, the negotiation, the rent's paid, but at a great loss of face to the Thai Chinese tenant who's been there. Now the inevitable happens. You cause enough loss of face and someone wants to rip your face off. There is a contract out on Calvino. The team that's sent to dispatch him miss. And they end up in a rather uh, unusual situation. Both of the hit squad are dead. Calvino, at the advice of his friend Colonel Pratt, decides to lay low for Patia in a few days. He goes off to Patia. First holiday in years, he's enjoying himself. He's in a suite in a great hotel. He's out on the balcony. He's got a whiskey in hand. He's about open copy of Graham Greene's The Coin of American when he sees a woman fall to her death past his balcony. It's that second where he locks eyes with this woman. And he, there's a second of recognition. He'd seen her a bit earlier in the day as he was checking in. He saw her making an offering at the spirit house. Again, they had locked eyes. He'd seen her twice, seen her eyes twice. First, the offering, the moment of hope. He saw her a second time, the moment of absolute terror falling to her death. Segway back to Bangkok. Back in Bangkok, he has a new case. There's an American ex-military guy who's now a private contractor out of Iraq who wants a minor wife followed. That's right, at Vincent's Alley. He's followed lots of minor wives in his career. What makes this slightly different is it's not Casey's minor wife, it's the minor wife of a Thai politician who's running for election. And Casey wants information about all the meetings with this politician. Now, 
Vincent does something he normally doesn't do in a situation like this. He kind of takes that on face value. He takes it, well, the guy wants the information because he has issues with this politician. This politician was implicated in the murder of Casey's son three or four er years earlier when the young man was here doing some audit work. Well, he audited in a way that he should not have audited, and as a result, they closed the books on Casey's son. Casey wants to reopen the book, and by reopening that book, he draws Calvino into a world of intrigue, back, backdoor dealings, private contractors, and a way to find a double way of getting revenge. So paying back Jack brings Calvino into his full glory in a community where he knows the society, the culture, the language, and the history, and he needs every bit of that, in this case, in order to stay alive and to come out of this book and feel that he has not just stayed alive, but he's made a difference. In Paying Back Jack, what we find is a number of these unrelated events, the stakeout of the minor wife, the falling to the death of the woman in Padilla, Calvino's meeting of a woman from Spain who works for a United Nations agency. If you think of the structure of some movies like Babel, you find a structure where events occur and the characters have a certain kind of delusion about their own world being independent from other worlds, when indeed those worlds are interconnected. Paying Back Jack is that kind of a book where you find a number of events that are on a collision course, where the characters find themselves in isolation and suddenly that isolation is broken and a world opens up inside of Bangkok quite unlike what they had expected. And it is the lack of that expectation that creates the tension in the story. It's the opening up and the connecting to the various unrelated circumstances, the so-called coincidences. And it's through the narrative of Paying Back Jack that we follow Vincent Calvino through a world of events that ultimately gain momentum, gain force into the our storm proportion. And in the center of that storm is Vincent Calvino. The premise behind Paying Back Jack is, in life, we often find ourselves in a situation where someone has helped us. The question is, how do you pay someone back who's gone out of the way? In Paying Back Jack, one of the characters central to the story, when he was young, was on a hike in Nepal, in the Himalayas, became very, very ill, almost died. So a man named Jack, who was there at the right time, made the intervention, saved his life. After saving the life, the question is, is what do you do? Jack says, I want nothing. What I want you to do is at the end of the day, sometime in your life, there will be someone just in your situation, extend a hand, help that person, pass it along. That's a very altruistic thing. The question is, is when you take paying back Jack another step. That step is paying back someone who has done a horrible thing, a terrible thing. In other words, it is revenge. It's not helping someone. It is doing something to set the scales of justice right. It can lead to vigilante type behavior. And in Paying Back Jack, these are some of the issues that are being explored. When we help someone and it becomes altruistic, when that line blurs into revenge, morally, what is happening to the character? Are you really paying someone back who helped you by taking it that extra step into the territory of revenge? Paying Back Jack looks at those issues and tries not to come up with an answer, because there is no one answer, but tries through the action of the characters to show the kind of moral dilemma that people face.